Hi you guys, welcome back to the channel. This is my first impression video where I take a look at every single sewing pattern that's part of a collection and review it. I kind of just give my first impression thoughts on fit, on fabrication, um, different ideas that I can see, and just kind of like my overall thoughts about the patterns. So Vogue just came out with their fall collection. So that's what we we're gonna take a look at today. How does that sound? Um, now remember, okay, Vogue is our bougie girly, okay? She's gonna be, you know, a little high-end, a little more elevated, maybe not always just what you would reach for for your everyday wardrobe, unless you are really special. Um, okay, so as we go through these, don't always just think about them as your own personal style, but think about them in kind of like an elevated version of your own personal style, maybe. Okay, with that, we have, <laughs> we're starting off with Marcy Chilton. That's mean. I know that that's mean, okay? Marcy does have a very kind of unique perspective. <laughs> that's being generous. Um, so not everybody loves her patterns, but they are unique, okay? And if you're looking for something a little bit different, she's where you go, all right? This is a semi-fitted uh, vest and jacket with button front closure, princess seam details, side seam pockets, bias hem facings, bias hem facings, good grief, length and collar variations. View A has bias armhole facings. View B has 7 8 inch length sleeves with seven eighth inch length no seven eighth length sleeves with contrast facings the vest is designed to layer under the jacket the vest is designed to layer under the jacket that's weird do we see that often a vest under a jacket with the same design i don't know and also, don't let all this patchwork fool you. This is a printed fabric, printed to look like all this patchwork, okay? Try and imagine it maybe a little bit more solid. But you can see here, the facings for the sleeves, button placket, princess seam. You have this, like, curved hem. And also, it's kind of, like, got an interesting shape. I don't love this. But from here down, it's kind of, I could see myself wearing this actually. Vests, for what it's worth, are going to, you're going to be seeing a lot of them. So if you don't have any vest patterns yet, maybe try and find some. Um, the more traditional vests have been around for a couple seasons, maybe at most, but they're really going to be taking off and you're going to see them in all kinds of variations. So, all right, there's the sleeve version. Okay, so here they are paired together. I mean, I guess that's fine, but like, I don't see, I guess the, what I'm confused by is the vest was designed to be worn under this. I think it's designed to be worn without that. And then you can just maybe wear them together if you want. I don't know about that um was designed to be worn as kind of thing okay here's the back again with your oh princess seams okay then we've got a seam here we've also got a little like pleat which is giving you that interesting shape that i was mentioning before with the volume and then here's the i guess collar i don't know why it's only folded over that one little bit that's interesting here's the back of the other one Again, is that folded over? Is that pleated? I It's hard to tell. But remember, all of this is just printed on the fabric. So all we have really is this design line, something through here, and that little pleat again. Here's the back line drawing wise. Yeah, can you see how there's like almost like a go-day looking thing in there? Really, really interesting design and shape. Now the back does have that little foldover thing and this one has its own little like pleated thing so I'm not entirely sure what that is about but just another element to her kind of unique design style I kind of don't hate it honestly guys it's it's like 
uh, not origami, but it is a little bit like playing around with shape and volume and all of that cut stuff makes garments more interesting. Like I've got enough plain jackets, you know, if I'm going to make a jacket now, it's going to be something that's cool and interesting. So this is, we've got all this already, denim, jacquard, linen, midweight cotton, midweight silk, quilting cottons, stable knits, and wool suiting. Wow, that really just runs the gamut of options. But if I were to dwindle all this down into one category, it would be your midweight wovens. Yeah. Okay, we've got two size um, ranges here. The 8 to 16 is in one pattern and then 18 to 26 in another one. That puts our finished busts at 39 to 55 and a half. And it's still probably pretty roomy. I would be shocked if it didn't have six inches of ease in it. They don't, they're going to give us the, they're going to give us the finished garment measurements, but not the body measurement chart for Vogue, which I guess you could access that online and then compare them. So I'd rather have finished garment measurements only than body measurement chart only. I mean, in a perfect world, we'd have both on the same thing to look at, or at least like a link, you know, something to make it a little bit easier. But, um, at least we have finished available to us and we can access the body measurement chart elsewhere. All right, so that is our first pattern. Okay, next up we have a coat in five lengths. Lined, fitted coat, has double breasted button or snap closing, princess seams and shoulder pads, View A has a contrast upper collar, and view E has a contrast fake fur upper collar. Collar. Okay, I'm getting like um, like 1930s, 40s vibes from this. Anybody else feeling like, or maybe even 1800s? Maybe I'm not going far enough back. What do you guys think? Something about this fit and flare. It is really sweet, like coat dress kind of thing. I think that. Yeah, we have princess seams here, double-breasted, like it said, kind of fitted through the shoulder, beautiful um, shoulder pad with the sleeve cap. You can see how that fits her really nicely. And then you can do this massive um, fur collar instead of the notched one if you want. And then it kind of flares out. That's really pretty. This would also make a really lovely dress. Like if you didn't make it out of coating fabric, you made it out of like some kind of stable woven midweight woven, it could be a really great dress too. You would just, you know, want to make sure that some way down here, it's like tacked down somehow, whether it's hidden buttons or snaps or something. Yeah. I mean, design wise, there's not a lot to write home about here. Seen it before, nothing new kind of thing. It's cute. It's pretty. It's lovely. It would make an exceptional jacket. You know, I don't really, there's not much else to say about it. The fact that it comes in five lengths, I mean, okay. I think that the the pink one is the shortest. And then this one is the longest. So it'd be like one, that's a lot of lengths. They recommend flannel, gabardine, and tweed. And then for E, fake fur. Yeah, and because there's so much to say about fabrication here and like your, you know, how much fabric you need, it's only three links. Don't lie to me. Look, one, two, three. Unless D and E are also different links. A, B. And then C, wow, it's just really confusing how they do this. I'm going to say there's only three links. And then D has, what does D have that the rest of them don't? Oh, I don't know. Anyways, oh, side seam pockets. I don't think it mentioned that. Anyways, there's so much to say about the fabric here that they don't get to include. There's not enough space to include anything else. Not that we need the French 
information here. That's not super helpful for an English or U.S. website, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm not bitter about that at all. Let's see if this is any more clear. D and E definitely have six buttons instead of four. C might not have any buttons at all. Yeah. But it's hard to tell if D and C are the same length or not because they're not on the same row. But anyways. Okie dokie. So now, oh boy, okay. Mrs. Pants, bell bottom pants sit one inch below the waist. Pants have fly front zippers, side front pockets, back darts, bias hem facings, and stitched hems. This is an interesting choice to me from Vogue. I would expect this from McCall's or Nomi even. Um, this is really out there for for Vogue, but you have what I'm sure, I mean, the look of both of these versions, um, from the knee up, the fit is, is great. And then I'm pretty sure, I don't know if there's a seam there or what, but it's like a circle skirt is added on from the knee down. Really fun, kind of funky, you know, 70s is here, been here though. Yeah, I mean, those are incredible, no doubt. But surprising for Vogue, right? Like, I'm not the only one that can think that. There is some ease in the thigh, so it's not, you know, totally, like, body hugging. Um, you've got some darting in the back, which is nice for shaping. So they're a little bit looser fitted, maybe, than what you, like, you know, I'm I'm picturing, like, um like truly like 70s style where it was like skin tight and then flared out. This is a little bit somewhere in the middle, but that is a significant flare. But yeah, I mean, both versions look really great. The fit is awesome. You can see the style line here is like a little bit angled. I mean, it is really cool. I, I would not wear those to Target though. So they're out for me. That's like my... <laughs> That's like my threshold. Like if I would wear these to Target, I'll buy the pattern. If not, maybe I shouldn't. No matter how cool I think it is, I, it's might, I might not be cool enough. I would wear them to a concert like all day long. Any kind of like musical thing, I would wear them to an event. Um but maybe I'm only getting like rock and roll vibes from them because they made them in that leather version. But the shorter version only has a straight seam here at the knee. This one has the curved one. I gotta imagine they're a blast to sew. How much fabric are they taking up? Oh my goodness, yes. Almost four yards of fabric. I figured that would be a lot. But they are recommending stretch wovens, tencel twill. That would be really pretty. Wool suiting. Ironically, they don't mention faux leather. Maybe that was some kind of stretch woven. They're throwing it into that category. 6 to 14 and 16 to 24 on the size range. That puts our hip, our finished hips, at 35 to 50 and a half. So that includes wearing ease and design ease. Fun and funky for Vogue. For sure. But man, they look great on both of them. Okie dokie. Next, we have, oh, the shirts from what we just saw. Okay. This is blouse. Semi-fitted blouse has collar that extends into tie ends. We've seen that a thousand times over the years. That's nothing new. It is really cool, but this little like, you know, pussy bow type of thing. I don't know if ugh. I'm not wearing that anymore. Um, maybe because I don't go to an office. Uh, uh, yeah, it just doesn't really fit into my lifestyle. But then again, I'm not, I'm not really Vogue's demographic either. So I got to remember that. Okay. Concealed front button closure. That's a cool detail. Long set in sleeves with continuous lap. Uh, continuous lap feels like the cheater version of uh, sleeve 
placket sleeve cuff thing. You know what I mean? Like, I'd rather see a sleeve placket than continuous lap, but especially from Vogue, right? Um, button cuffs, stitched hems. View A has tapered sleeves. View B has bishop sleeves with gathers. Also, it's not intended to be a gathered sleeve, so I don't think. Anyways, we'll look at the line drawings to make sure, but... Or maybe this version is intended to be gathered. Maybe do bishop sleeves include a gather up here? That might be where I'm being mistaken. But, yeah, I mean, it's a nice blouse. I, I just can't even tell you the last time I thought about buying a blouse, much less one with all these design details on it. Again, fits them really well, looking really good, kind of everywhere. And then, yeah, there is some gathering up here. So, so yeah, they're recommending lightweight drapey fabrics like charmeuse, crepe de chine, poplin, silk jacquard. And then finished probably the, wow, oh, I don't know, it's hard to say. For me, the waist, I mean, I'm sorry, the hip is going to be the closest fitting, but I think you should probably be basting it off of your bust. So a finished bust is 35 to 50 and a half inches finished. Also an interesting choice to put the little, the kind of like literally buttoned up, you know, prissy little pussy bow blouse with these like rock and roll pants, right? But I guess if you're going to vogify crazy flared pants like that, this is how you make it a little bit more classy. Like it's not going to be a crop top. <laughs> oh, okay. Now we have, look at this. Men's coat in two lengths. Loose fitting lined coat with wide peak lapels has extended shoulders with shoulder pads, welt pockets, back vent, two piece sleeves of button vents, and top stitching. Okay, fun fact Vogue's in house designer is a man. His name is Carlos. He's really nice and sweet and amazing and has incredible personal style. So if they're giving him the freedom to make a couple of men's patterns, design a couple of men's patterns, they're going to be, well, it depends on how much freedom they're giving him. Like if they're telling him, no, they've got to be classic designs, then probably not. But if they're giving him a little bit of leeway, I could see him coming up with some really cool stuff for men. This one happens to have like a drop shoulder, which I think is probably like the big, like, you know, um, if we're going to deviate from like the classic men's coat, in any way, let's make it a little bit oversized. This really big welt pocket too up here, probably. But yeah, it's got like a little grown-on situation or a, like a shawl collar kind of. I don't know about a man in hounds tooth, especially this. I don't know. I'm trying to something about the hounds tooth and the t-shirt and the, his look. It just are not mushing for me. I don't think this guy would actually wear this, I guess is my point. He looks incredible, like a million bucks. Like if I saw that guy on the street, I would be like, wow, you are rich. <laughs> That's what I always say about Vogue patterns. When they, when they pull them off well, the models look expensive. Like they look like they have money. And I guess that's the point of a Vogue pattern, right? Yeah, that looks really good. Look at the sleeve, though. That's interesting. More like a blazer, right? Than like a winter coat. Super cool. Yep, so here's our line drawings. I don't think we missed anything there. Flannel, gabardine, medium weight wools, and wool tweed. Yeah, all your coating fabrics. But, I mean, it could be really cool in, like, a denim. I'm thinking because literally I saw a photo of Taylor Swift today in this oversized denim trench coat kind of thing. Hers had a lot more, like, denim-y type of details. But this could be, like, a cleaner, sleeker version of that. And there's no one saying that a woman can't make this pattern. Right? Giving that, like, boyfriend or, like, grandfather jacket look 
just pay attention to your, I guess, chest measurements would be the best. Maybe hip. Depending on how much. There's not a big difference between bust and hip for a man. So, yeah, depending on where you fall, either one of those would work. Cool. Love that for the guys. Okay. This is pretty. This is a knit dress. Close fitting dress with cut out shoulder design has under bust and princess seams with top stitching, invisible side seam zipper, back vent, and stitch hem. So A has crew neck and short sleeves. UB has turtleneck and long sleeves. Okay. So pay attention to fit here, right? Look at it on her. And then now look at it on her. See all this? And see how this is like kind of straight? Whereas with her, she has an actual waist. There's no extra anything going on. And they pretty much have the same stance where they've got this hip popped. So this is too big on her. This fits her like amazing. Amazing. But this is the real showstopper. This kind of like under bust situation. That's really, really cool. Very fashion forward right now. A lot of like the kind of younger, like uh, Sophia Ritchie and, you know, all of the little it girls are wearing this. So interesting to see how Vogue is translating that for a more sophisticated, like maybe even more mature woman. This is really, really, this is what I love. Like, these are the Vogue patterns that I absolutely adore. Um, again, I've got nowhere to wear it. It doesn't fit my lifestyle, but I wish it did. Like, I'd be willing to change my lifestyle for this dress. <laughs> like, where can I go? Like, let's make a reservation, you know? So really, really cool. And there is a side seam zipper. It's knit, though. I'm not entirely sure you need that. I want to know how you get into it on the through the neckline, though. Does it just pull on because it's stretchy? Okay, here's the back. So you have like a yoke and then princess seams continue in the back. Here's the zipper. And yeah, I think you just pull it on. So if you can pull this little thing on over your head, certainly the rest of it you can just pull on, right? Oh, and look at that pretty vent. Yeah, that's really, really pretty. If you've got like a wedding or even like a holiday event, please consider this. Even just in black, it would be such a showstopper. I just love this little like cage detail. So good. Okay, so they're recommending two-way stretch knits with 50% cross grain. Thank you so much for putting this information here. Makes it a lot easier easier for us to shop online. Jersey, Ponty Knit. You might be a little bit pressed to find a Ponty with a 50% stretch, though. And then Ribbed Knit. Ribbed Knit, for sure, you'll find 50%. And then if you find something and it doesn't stretch this much, then you can always size up um, to help with that. And then finish garment measurements on this. It, you really should be working with like I mean, negative ease up to maybe one inch, maybe. You do not need a lot of ease for a stretch garment. Love that. Great job, team. Okay, here's another kind of cold shoulder dress. Close fitting knit dress has asymmetric neckline, gathers invisible side seam zipper, long or short sleeves, and stitch hems. View A is mid knee length, view B is calf length. Wow, so this is giving like dynasty. Like not, not, not the Asian dynasties, not the Ming dynasty, but like dynasty, that 1980s television show, right? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. 
I, it's just the ruching and this like it's very 1980s with this like asymmetric ruching thing happening plus the off the shoulder this is definitely more casual and I could see myself wearing this almost think about like a oversized deconstructed you know kind of t-shirt dress maybe maybe I think the print certainly helps make it a little bit more casual. This, I think, has a little bit of, like, shine and, like, slinkiness to it. So that's making it dress up a little bit. Oh, man, yeah. I kind of really like this one. I mean, I like the last one, too. But this one I can actually see myself making and wearing. And then, you know, it's one of those kind of almost all season dresses because you just throw on a little jacket. No one would be the wiser that you didn't have another sleeve on over here. Let's see the back. Thank you. Again, I'm not entirely sure why you need a zipper. I would just pull it on. I wouldn't butts around with that. There is some flair to the skirt, which I'm just inherently more comfortable in myself. Gosh, her skin. Wow. I wish my skin, like, was that healthy. I don't think it is. Here is the back of hers. Yeah, just slinky. A little bit more close-fitted all the way around. And I wonder if they're using like some tape or something to keep this up. Obviously, there's elastic in here, but something has got to be in there also, right? Something else is helping. Okay, super cute. Wow, the line drawings make it look much more like, I don't know. The line drawings don't really translate. Usually it's the other way around where the line drawings look cuter than the actual make but not in this case like if I saw that just the line drawing I would be like ew that's kind of frumpy but it's not frumpy like at all um this one again 50% cross grain stretch two-way stretch knits on this one so it has to whereas the other one was just a one-way stretch I don't really know why there would be a big difference I can't think of a good reason why you'd have to use two-way on this one and not on the other one. But they're suggesting cotton spandex blends, jersey, rayon spandex blends. Yeah, that makes sense. Just a lighter weight on this one. Maybe because the other one was so close-fitting, you'd want to have a little bit more heft to your fabric. That'd be my best guess. And then again, we should be talking like Maybe a little bit more ease on this one, but it should still be like somewhere around zero. The hip will have more because it's kind of like a, you know, an A-line skirt. But like at your waist, maybe one inch. Bust, maybe one inch. Cool. I love both of those. They're kind of similar, right? I think that in our minds, it'd be interesting to see which one we remember more. But this, I think, is a little bit more wearable just every day. Okay, here's Rachel Comey's edition this season. I always, always love the Rachel Comey dresses, um, patterns. I just, her vibe is my vibe. Like, I, I, you know, if I could afford all her clothes, I would buy them all. But lined, fit and flare dress in midi length has open neckline with draped detailing, three-quarter sleeves, stitch hems, and back and visible closure. Okay, interesting. So I think if you would ask me before I saw this what Rachel's kind of design aesthetic was, I would say kind of more like boxy designs, kind of more like mm, not shapeless, but like, you know, not close fitting, not draped. I don't think I can remember the last time I've seen a draped anything from her. But we've got, I can't zoom in anymore on this photo, but you can see it's also in black, which is harder to see. But it's got like almost like a tucked thing. Like this is coming up and being tucked in. This feels very like ballerina um, shrug. And then you've got this waist seam. 
that flares into this skirt, but in the back it comes down to like a V. Here it is on another model. It's still black, so you can't really, really see it, but yeah, I don't, oh yeah, I need to see like more either closer or more line drawings. You do have a zipper here. There's a little seam here. I don't know if that continues up like a princess seam or not. And I still can't tell whether it's knit or woven. Wait, where's the... No! Where's the <laughs> back of the envelope? No! We don't have the back of the envelope, so I still don't know if it's woven or not. Hopefully, maybe soon they will fix this little glitch on this one. But here's the line drawing. That's going to give us a little bit more information. Um, you do have a center front seam that's doing some twisty thing here. And then the stitched hem on the sleeve. And that all is going, this whole rapidy wrap thing is going into like a back princess seam that goes down into like a little point. And then your center back zipper. I kind of really love this. Now, I got to say, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not convinced that this is the right size for her, which also means I'm not convinced that they all are going to be this open and this low. Um, where's the blonde? Hold on. Oh, here she is. Like this, in the back, it looks a little big on her, right? The blonde feels like it's not as low, but they definitely are pulling this open more than maybe you'd have to. Was it a set-in sleeve? Yeah. So I think there's a set-in sleeve there, which means this whole thing should be sitting, I mean, the sleeve cap shouldn't be on the edge of her arm. It should be way up here on her, like where her clavicle ends. So in that case, if you're imagining all this pulled up, it should be up here and then draping down like that. Again, hard to say if it's a like doesn't fit this model thing or if it's a bad draft. It, it's just, it's impossible to know. You'd have to wait for some more people to make it or maybe go on Rachel Comey's site and see if you can find this dress on different models. That's an option. Um, but the fact that it doesn't say Mrs. Knit Dress makes me think it's woven. And if that's the case, then we're talking lightweight drapey fabric woven. So the rayon chalets and poplins and all of that kind of stuff. It is really pretty. It is really pretty. But would I grab this just to wear any day? Yeah, maybe I would. I like how it's not like your your classic fit and flare. I like how it has a little bit of drape to it that feels more relaxed. Maybe that's the Rachel Comey vibe. It's just kind of like relaxed, chill, cool girl. You know? And I was interpreting it more as like boxy shapes. But maybe relaxed is the better way to say it. Okay, we've got a Mrs. Jacket. Really, it's looking like a blazer. Um, Semi-fitted line jacket has shawl collar, princess seams, slightly extended shoulders with shoulder pads, front pocket, side panels with no side seams, and long two-piece sleeves with button bent. So it's your classic, classic shawl collared blazer. All right, we've got the welt pockets. Yeah, the Chanel tweed for sure. Um, I think Vogue, I don't know if there's like, you know, a Vogue Bible or anything, but I think whatever they've got, it says in there that every single fall they must release like a new tailored blouse or a new tailored blazer. Yep, and this is their one for this year. Yeah, I mean, it looks great, right? Like it fits each of them like a glove. I mean, look at the shaping details, whoop, you know, with that princess seam, plus a little something happening here too, and a center back seam, and it's all matched up with this baby plaid, like, it it really does look incredible. I do like how on this one, they have this little, like, curved detail on the sleeve placket, 
That's kind of cool. But yeah, that looks that looks great. Oh, so it's two seams, even better. So two princess seams here. Yeah, you would have a lot of fun making this one. You're probably going to interface the whole thing. Um, and it's fully lined. So, yeah, this one would be one of those, like, we're going to sit down and really spend some time on this. Brocade, linen, tweed, wool, crepe, wool suiting, for sure. And then you have your finished garment measurements of, at the bust, 33 to 48 and a half. But your waist might be actually more fitted than your bust. So I'd check both. All right, next up. Vintage Vogue. One piece evening dress. Vintage Vogue pattern circa 1963. Isn't that like the JFK era? Empire waisted fitted dress in two lengths. Has loose Loose back panel for a longer length. What does that mean? I always have the hardest time with these vintage pattern descriptions because they use terminology that we just do not use anymore. Loose. And they also kind of construct things differently back then. Loose back panel. Loose. Does that mean it's removable? Lo oh, separate? Oh, man. High or low scooped back neckline, short sleeves and sleeveless, bow trimmed belt. Okay. I think what it means is that this is a separate piece that acts as a train. Other than that, though, it's a pretty classic silhouette, right? Kind of shift dressy. Um, you do have the princess seems a little baby dart. And then this bow belt, of course, they put sleeves on it. But if you took off all this accoutrement, <laughs> look at me getting fancy, looking at a Vogue, <laughs> a vintage Vogue pattern, no gloves, took all this off, you would be left with a very, very simple silhouette. And then you can add on, maybe not necessarily, you know, a bow belt with a big sparkly thing in the middle. But maybe like some kind of like neckline detail, maybe, you know, a frill here and there, that kind of thing. And then here's the back. I do adore this design with a little scoop back. So pretty. Okay. Uh, Baratheia. Never heard of Baratheia before. Brocade, crepe, fail. Lame. Wow. Linen, is that Moira, like the name, or more like soiree? Moire, is that how you say that? Moire, pique, which is like a textured cotton, kind of satin chantung, Syrah, don't know what that is, and velvet. I haven't heard of at least half of these, <laughs> I've never seen those words before. Okay. Notions are usually pretty interesting. This one usually this one has pretty common things. The horsehair braid is the most uncommon and that's pretty common still. And then uh finished garment measurements. 35 to 51 in the bust. Yeah, nice little gown for the holidays. But you can make that little mini version a little bit more casual. Okay, Mrs. Knit Jacket with Belt, Top and Pants. Loose fitting. <laughs> loose fitting jacket has dropped shoulders, lined hood, front facing, side seam pockets with belt carriers and stitched hems. Top has neck band and side slits with miter corners. Hole on. Elastic waist pants have drawstring, side seam pockets, and shaped leg opening with stitched hem. So this is your kind of like, I think athleisure has kind of morphed into just 
leisure leisure <laughs> and then you just wear the leisure stuff out now I mean this is full-on pajamas but they put her in a chunky boot it's like Christmas it's like winter morning it's just snowed and you're gonna go get the newspaper vibes but people are also just like going out like this maybe not with the robe but like this whole thing you know kind of inspired a little bit by skims maybe the kim kardashian's kind of like loungewear brand but the definition between loungewear and streetwear is getting a little bit blurry now in terms of like wear this around the house and being able to answer the door and check the mail and go get the newspaper you'd never look better this is a million miles from most of our pajamas, right? I just don't know about wearing it out in public. But inside, just as good as any, right? Way better, in fact. They use this, like, really thin, probably some kind of, like, rayon or very lightweight cotton jersey. Almost has like a heathered effect to it. Not expensive. The fabric doesn't have to be expensive. Of course, you could get like a silk jersey and really like ramp it up, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, the drape on that is so pretty though. And also, too, like the head to toe tonal thing is also very much a thing. So don't be afraid to just like. You know, go all out, matchy, matchy, matchy. So, moderate stretch knits, 35% cross grain stretch. So, that's pretty, well, I mean, that's actually not that much stretch. I guess because it's so oversized, it probably doesn't have to be all that stretchy at all. You, the drape is maybe more important. Interlock jersey, sweater knits are what they're recommending specifically. Interlock jersey and sweater knits are the three, yeah. Yep. But line drawing wise, if you made this out of something that was a little bit more structured, that's still a really cute little easy coat. What do we think about the tapered leg? I didn't really notice it on her. Again, the fabric is so drapey, but it's definitely there. I mean, she probably doesn't have very prominent calves. Like I have, like boots don't fit me if they go above my ankle. And so it is a little bit fitted through there. We never see the top of the pants though. So it's hard to totally tell, but yeah, a good little basic set that you could play around with and, and do a bunch of different ways, I think. Oh boy, are they really throwing me three vintage Vogues? Okay, I'm gonna do my best. This one is circa 1975, semi-fitted, partially lined jacket, has pointed collar on shaped band, epaulettes with carriers and button trim, front and back yokes, patch pockets with flaps, side slits, short sleeves with turn back cuffs and full length sleeves, pleated into button band cuffs, Front buttoned simulated band closing. I'm exhausted in top stitching. Wide leg, wait, wide straight leg pants. How can they be both? Darted into waistband with belt carriers have western pockets, mock fly front closing and top stitching shown with purchased tops and belt. Yeah, very safari feeling, western shore, um, but it looks like a, do they call it a jacket? The pants are incredible, though. Look at the cool pocket. I do wish we could see them on an actual human. I know that they're reproductions, but like, <laughs> I'll just whine and complain about it until someone listens, please. Yeah, the pants look really, really cool. The shirts are okay, but there's nothing better than this 1970, mid-70s pant. And they are calling it a jacket. So they're recommending chino corduroy denim, double knit, duck, flannel, gabardine, linen, pinwheel, corduroy, and poplin. 
and they're not separating out the pants from the jacket. So yeah, mid-weight woven for both outside of that double knit suggestion. I mean, this way styled here with the collar popped and the, you know, close fitting shirt underneath is definitely still very, very relevant. This, I don't know about this. Maybe the hat's throwing me off. Um, maybe it's the length of the shirt feels a little odd. But wearing it as a true jacket opened up like that, for sure. A million percent. The next vintage pattern is... Oh boy, dress and capelet from 1950, couturier design. Couturier? Couturier? Which couturier? Slim, four piece skirt. That's center front seam, side seams, and back seam. Has soft released pleats at side fronts and two welt pockets. Skirt joins sleeveless blouse at waistline. How? <laughs> Is it just buttoned on? Collarless deep square neckline. Deep tuck at midsection. Collarless shoulder cape buttons at center front. Oh my gosh. Okay. So basically the skirt detaches from the top. I think I've got that. And then this is tucked up under here. It's all one piece, even though it looks like this is a separate piece. And then the cape like goes on top of that to make it look like one, two, three separate tiers. No doubt in my mind that this is absolutely beautiful, but where are we wearing this? Even like the Upper East Side lady, where is she wearing it? Like brunch, like some fancy like brunch or something? It's like casual, but not. I do love the double side darts, though. That is just, what a detail. Square neckline. This top concept where it's like tucked under and you tuck in the lower portion and then this stays out to kind of look like a separate layer. That's a really interesting concept that I think could be manipulated into like a more modern day design. Like, I'm trying to think, like, even if it were, like, not tucked in, but, like, tucked under, and then you have a slim-fitting skirt underneath or something, I don't know, like, I don't know, I'm not a designer, but I'm just saying, that could be cool. I mean, from the back, it's definitely interesting. Not, not as great from the back. Um, a little lamp shady, right? Like, this is the lampshade, right? And this is the base of the lamp. <laughs> okay. All right. Very interesting. Wow. Look how detailed the line drawings are. They put like faces on the line drawings back in the day. I didn't realize that. But I guess they were all illustrated to start with. So maybe that's why. Anyways, chambray, cotton broadcloth, crepe, fail crepe, gingham, linen, shantong, and sarah. I have to find out what this sarah is. Obviously some mid-weight woven, but. All right, and then the next vintage vogue is this number. They're literally just calling this an evening dress. So no confusion this is meant to be worn out look she's dancing with her date vintage vogue circa 1948 three piece flared skirt joined to yoke very full overskirt falling in cascade at sides skirt joins bodice at the waistline strapless bodice is finished with shaped cuff band. I don't know what hardly any of that means. Okay, three piece skirt, meaning side seams and a center back seam. And then this is considered an overskirt that cascades. So can think of it like a like a high low, like basically a high low skirt that's really, really high. Um, and maybe even like a circle-y aspect to the cutting of it. 
And then I think this is what they meant by that cuff thing, how it's kind of turned back a little bit, but you do have this design detail. There's some other dart or something here, center front. And then here's the back. Yeah, I mean, definitely no reason this couldn't be a wedding dress. Um, they got it here in white, but... The fan and then the little peep of the red shoe. I mean, there's no wonder these vintage illustrations are so highly coveted. Wow. Okay, so... Brocade, fail, satin, silk jubioni, taffeta, lining. There's crinoline in there. You, I think you make the belt. Yeah, there's just a lot happening. Oh my gosh, eight and three eighths yards. And that's just the dress. I'm not sure what one tone means. Featherweight boning, seam binding, and then a buckle with a prong. Wow. Wow. I mean, they can't possibly sell that many of these, right? Like, are people really making these? Like, lots of people? I don't know. Okay, but we're getting back into... Wait, this feels like I've seen this. And I know I've seen this. And that. Okay, I think that might be it then. I think this is getting us into early fall? Summer? We remember all these from summer, right? Remember the suit? The, <laughs> the, the um, what is it called? Uh, work to fun? Happy hour? What's it called when you go to the office and then you take, you like change your outfit in one small way and then you go out at night? I, why, I can't think of what that's called. Anyways, we remember this one from that, right? Okay. Anyways, what do we think about Vogue Fall? I mean, yeah, looking back, looking back, yeah, it's a little, I think, I think the Comey dress, I think this dress and this dress really saved this collection. Um, this helped a little bit too. Um, the rest of it just feels like, well, maybe the pants, but without that, I mean, if we only had these like coats and blazers and stuff, I think we would be a little bit sad, but they're adding some funner elements, right? They're sexifying it a little bit. They're giving us some shoulder, some deep V, some shape. I don't know how many of these are going to end up in my stash, but I'm curious to know what you guys think. Um, not just like whether or not it fits into your, like whether you're going to buy any of them, but also like, just do we have any general respect for the designs like that other people could wear them? Or is this like no one should wear these? <laughs> Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Otherwise, I will be back really soon with um, some more fall pattern first impressions.